I was working with Common Ground in New Orleans in the Lower Ninth. I got there two years after Katrina, and when I got there, I was really shocked to see cement blocks where the uh, houses had been washed off the foundations, and the government was fining people for not cutting their grass when their houses were totally washed away. I was out in Queens when Sandy came in, and we thought, surely this can't be that big of a deal, right? It's, a, it's not even a hurricane. What amazed me was how powerful the storm was and how it just flattened Staten Island. I mean, there was just nothing. To see the subway close down for the first time in over 100 years because this catastrophic storm had hit New York City was truly terrifying. And I thought, man, if this just starts happening everywhere, what is our world going to be like? Not good. Believe me, not good. The Caribbean has just been getting hammered. The strongest hurricane in history to make landfall. Prayers are needed for this area. Anytime it rains, people are re-traumatized. They're afraid. The flooding was severe, and they're having to adjust to the fact that their lives are very different now. Their lives are not ever going to be the same again because of this storm in some very negative and long-lasting ways. The west side and the central area in Puerto Rico have been really heavily affected. There's like 400 miles out of 5,000 miles of traversable roads. There's bridges that have collapsed. The death toll that's being reported is like grossly underestimated. It came in through the southeast and it created a lot of damage in the area and a lot of damage in the mountains. And then it, it exited towards the northwest. So basically the whole island was hit. Communities, you know, vary in different degrees of the damage, but it's been immense. When you're unable to go about your day-to-day -day life, when people are unable to go to their jobs, when children are unable to go to school, when uh, folks are unable to get medical care, when people literally die of infections, that's catastrophe. There's a great deal of damage. Homes are in disrepair, there's trash in the streets, there are dogs roaming the streets that are hungry because the people that they were previously relying on to take care of them are no longer able to feed or care for them. There's a lot of displaced folks. People who were homeless prior to the storm are still living in shelter environments where they are re-victimized and re-traumatized on a regular basis by these large international disaster relief organizations who come into the city and oftentimes do more harm than good. My name is Deborah. I am one of the co-founders of BioAction Street Health, which is a street medic collective in Houston. Bash formed right before Hurricane Harvey and has been doing disaster relief and mutual aid work since the storm. It's a loose collective of people from around the city and around the country who come and help out for whatever predetermined amount of time that they want to come and be here. We advocate for people who have been locked out of the Red Cross shelter. We help with mucking and gutting of the homes that were flooded. We are doing mold remediation, clothing distribution, food distribution, supply distribution, along with street medic training, mental health training, peer-to-peer -peer counseling training, and regular old street medicing. In times of crisis, I think it's natural for people to look around and see how they can help. We saw a lot of it in Houston, and we saw it happen very quickly. We saw mutual aid groups come together in the blink of an eye. Communities that we're working in, the lower socioeconomic status, the homeless, the poor, the working poor, sometimes they need other people to come in and give them a hand. They know what needs to be done. They don't need to be infantilized or objectified or tokenized but they just need access to resources. And if you have access to resources, then it's your duty to provide those resources to those who don't have them. The water was not water. It was sewage and it was overflow from the Superfund sites, from the, the chemical cleanup sites, and it was toxic. Houston is one of the petrochemical centers of the Gulf Coast. So when the storm came, we had fuel spills, we had sites that were flooded that were already contaminated, so that water flowed through the city. What we already know happens in those areas are large concentrations of upper respiratory and lung diseases, cancer clusters, fetal death, premature birth, deformities, not only in the short term, but the effects of the petrochemical industry, that's a long-term problem. We may not see those effects for 5, 10, 15 years from now, but eventually we're gonna see them. We have looting in Houston in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. That's according to local police officials. There have been numerous reports of looting by storm survivors. Neighbors here, they're not messing around. 
I know of one grocery store in Houston after the storm that was broken into because people were hungry. They took eggs, they took milk, and they took bread. The media was out and a reporter called the cops and his reasoning was we had to keep order in place otherwise there would be total chaos. So of course the government wants to criminalize disaster victims because it does the same with poverty. It has to be part of the discourse and the narrative and it's also very racialized. There were all those images that came out of Katrina. Um, there's one in particular where it's a photo of a white person with a bag full of groceries dragging it through the floodwaters and they were portrayed as being beneficial to their family and the community. And then there's another photo of a black person, basically the same situation, looters, you know, ravaging the city. It's a game. They're the same people doing the same thing for the same reason. Especially uh, Puerto Ricans being the second class citizens, if you may, these people who are, enjoy some rights but are colonized by the U.S. Then you also have to promote this idea of criminalization, this idea of incapacity to run a government. But we have the conditions that we have because U.S. imperialism and colonialism has created the situation. What should people do? Should they die? Should they allow their children to die? We should all be considering very deeply what it means when a society values things over human life. Because with the way our society is unraveling and how rapidly it's unraveling, one could easily find themselves swimming to the corner store in search of food. Mm -hmm.